I specialize in small scale sculpture, mainly uh, diorama. Do you want me to go no, 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 you, give them a heads up that we're recording? Uh, it should be fine. Okay. Uh, there's other people over here working on their own arts, but what is it? What, what kind of what kind of stuff do you do? So I specialize in small scale sculpture, uh, mainly diorama based mediums. What's the the draw? What's the focus? What, why this? Yeah, I think the first reason working with miniatures is just a childhood love of miniatures. That means model trains at Christmas, afternoons spent with a dollhouse, tangible worlds in miniature brought to life by Becky Steele. You know, when I came in, I expected a giant magnifying glass because you yeah. work with so many of these these miniatures. But I think as I've gotten older too, realizing that it's this really incredible means to shift people's perception of the world around them as well as their place within it. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, um, we're gonna talk a little bit about Utopia. Well, I mean, the whole the whole point is that it's a, it's a social project, right? As dynamic in nature as the small railways and mansions from years ago, Utopia is a living project, a world made small. Which kind of takes me back to that meditative place as I'm working on these things. Right. Just looking at, kind of getting lost in a lot of the small details. So I thought to myself, if I were to restart society, what would it look like? So she's done exactly that, creating a sprawling microcosm, encapsulating a new society, and filling it with real applicants rendered in miniature, an experiment that starts by stepping back. Yeah, I mean, I think the first thing is just reopening people's sense of wonder. I think it's something that we all have innately as children. So in a world obsessed with online and virtual realities, I kind of view my work more as this, you know, lo-fi virtual reality, where there are these, you know, alternate spaces, but they still do exist in reality. Built to explore possibilities of a better world, unburdened by everything that happens in this one. When you remove all those things, I think a lot of the answers to these more complicated issues become a little more straightforward. And it's a way for people to kind of find the common ground again. The result has been an interactive piece of art, growing and changing over the past three years based on big decisions made by tiny residents. I think it's also this really interesting exploration into almost using like human beings as a medium in this artistic process. How has this space, this utopia project, how has it changed? That's an interesting question. Because it has been changing, all based on ballots and voting, determining elder care, crop growth, safety methods, and expansion of lore and the actual diorama. It's been almost kind of developed uh, in a similar way to like how a game board would expand or something. It's very intentional for me to show those seams in between and show where all these components come together. But I would say that it's become like the more that people come in, the more that the viewpoints of like what a, what a society actually needs to survive expands as well. So that's what informed the end result that you see here, as well as the uh, community greenhouse, which is seen as the geodesic dome. So that's not a thunder dome? It's not a thunder dome, but it could end up being one. Dope. Yeah, yeah, dystopias exist too. But as the years tick by and more and more people join the project, I think she's going to see more interaction, honestly. Residents face an increased sense of reality, real challenges, questions of law, regulation, and restriction. The bigger it gets, the more we have to deal with problems that come up in the real world that might not necessarily be evident in the diorama. And this, of course, posing a very important question regarding time. How long will this thing go on? Yeah, I'm curious to see how long it can go on. Sure. It's become less about, it's, it's less about dreaming and more about like actual reality at this point, I feel like. Because that's ultimately what this project is about too. It's not just my vision and my voice. There are at this point over 80 other people from you know around the country as well as around the world represented. So it's kind of this, this common voice coming together. A common voice in this simulated reality creating a very real community. What's kind of been your experience with Utopia? What has it been to you? I joined because I really like the idea of intentional communities. The biggest, uh, the biggest things that I've like gained from Utopia is the, the actual personal connection. I really like this idea of 
using this artistic expression as a way to create conversation with people. And maybe with some of that clarification in their own mind, they feel more inspired to do community building in, I, I guess what I would call the real world. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And that's really my end goal with this, is that they they start to view perhaps their own ideas as far as what their own personal utopia would look like. And then also figure out ways that they can implement those things in their day-to-day -day lives to help make small changes within their communities that I think ep really can echo on a larger global scale. So smaller than normal, this living medium known as utopia looks to change life at large. Thank you so much for taking the time to, to talk with me about this. Um, yeah, absolutely. No worries at all. Get back to your day and I'm going to go back to editing this story. Cool. Sounds great. Thanks, John. All right. Thanks. Appreciate it.